Welcome to this service of worship on Monday, Thursday with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church and Preschool in Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Pastor Rick Sherrill. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to this online worship experience together. The setting of the first Monday, Thursday is Jerusalem, the capital and the center of Jewish religious faith in Jesus' day. It is the culmination of Passover. There are guests in Jerusalem. The place is bustling. And Jesus tells his disciples, James and John, to find a place to celebrate the Passover meal together. They are led to a small upper room, and there they eat, there they celebrate. The events that occurred in that upper room still deeply affect our lives and our world today. You see, the word Monday means commandment, specifically Jesus' commandment to love. As we begin this time of worship together, we boldly proclaim the long-awaited confession and absolution that we began on Ash Wednesday. Please join me. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. Today, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbors and enter the celebration of Holy Week reconciled with God and one another. Please join me in praying together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to live and to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. God has wiped the slate clean for each and every one of us. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together we say, Amen. Let's sing out now on this hymn of joy and celebration. Someone shouting from the desert, someone shouting from the sea, someone shouting from the mountain, someone shouting from the valley, Messiah, Messiah, come and be our King. city. I am young and I am cold. Someone shouting from the country. I am lonely, I am Shouting, come and change me. 
Someone shouting, save my soul. The scripture reading for this Monday, Thursday is found in John chapter 13, as we once again experience the events in that upper room in Jerusalem. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe. And he returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. What would you bring? to the hardest and most grueling day of your life? What would be in your mind? What would be in your heart? Would you be angry or hysterical or simply resigned to the fact that this day was going to be rougher than any other? Would you pray for it to be over? Or would you simply shut down and do nothing? On the hardest day of his life, Jesus brought love to those around him, and by extension, to all of us. You see, in that upper room, it was his final chance to invest in the lives of his disciples so they could see what he was really about, so he could give them enduring memories. He called them friends, and now he's pouring his final instructions into them. 
And Jesus chose to leave them with one thing above all other. He chose to leave them with love. You see, love with the bowl of water and the towel. Love in action. Love as he positions himself as a humble servant. You see, washing feet was the worst job in the servant hierarchy. It was for the one on the bottom of the totem pole. It was dirty, it was smelly, it was messy. And Jesus takes that role for himself. And not only that, but I wonder as he washes each of the feet of each of his 12 disciples at that point, as he looks at them, especially at Judas, as he knows that Judas will betray him. What is he thinking? What is he feeling? It hardly matters, because what he's doing is showing love, even to those who are against him. He shows love at the table just a little bit later on by taking the bread and the wine and turning it into something incredible, not only for them there in that moment, but for all of us. You see, he took on the role of a generous servant, giving them an enduring gift of love that would empower them to follow in his footsteps and by extension to help all of us follow in his footsteps. To know a closeness with God that had never been known before. To understand that God's love is not just talk, it's action, it's movement at the table. And I wonder as he passed out the bread, as he hoisted the wine and then sent it around the table as well, that he looked into the eyes of those who would leave him in just a few short hours, who would run away, who would, in fact, deny even knowing him. What was he feeling? What was he thinking? But again, it hardly matters. He was acting in love. Love in the garden, a little bit later on, as he positions himself in the role of the strong servant who held back from lashing out, who held back from blaming others, who held back from running away. He went willingly as he was arrested. He went willingly on those first steps to the journey that would lead to his cross. And I wonder as he looked around at the crowd, as he saw their faces, as he wondered which of them would be the ones to yell out in just a few short hours, crucify him, crucify him, what he was thinking, what he was feeling. And yet, it hardly matters, he was acting in love. You see, Monday Thursday is all about love, expressed in different ways, but always love nonetheless. On the hardest day of his life, and I always think this is the hardest day, uh, because it's not only the anticipation of what comes next, of the pain and the betrayal and the humiliation, because isn't anticipation of all of those things even more difficult sometimes than the actual things themselves? But then we know that all of it comes to him in this 24 hours. On the hardest day of his life, Jesus thought about his friends. He cared about his friends, but more importantly, he acted on behalf of his friends. He acted on behalf of the people around him and all the people of all time in God's creation. All people who have a heartbeat, all designed by God. 
He could face this journey far better than he could face our hopelessness. And so he went down the path that led to the cross. You see, Jesus showed love that cries out for a response, that cries out for action. And so we are compelled to do likewise. We are compelled to do more than just offer thoughts and prayers when evil touches down like a tornado in the midst of our communities. We are compelled to do more than simply observe from a distance. We are compelled to act just like Jesus did, to show that our love is real through service and to get up tomorrow and do it again and do it again and do it again until we have no more breath. That's what Monday Thursday is all about. Thanks be to God. Amen. take time to pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need please join me in prayer you call your people to hand on what we receive from you so help us to be active in service from one generation to the next give your church power and courage to act on behalf of those around us, of those whom you love. 
which is everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we celebrate that you have redeemed your people over and over again. And we pray that you will preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression, that you will establish just leadership in place of tyranny and peace in place of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus loved his followers to the end, even on his worst day. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it right now. Those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or feel overlooked, those who are sick and dying, those who are caregivers, those who are first responders, those who are soldiers, those who simply have no hope. Lord, we pray that you will fill your people, all people, with whatever it is they need tonight. Thank you for loving us and embracing us even when we run away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, even those who would run away from him, even the one who betrayed him. Inspire Prince of Peace to be a, a beacon of service. Help us to reach out with the love that Jesus showed us. Give us renewed courage to serve and bless the ministry of all of those who serve not in the spotlight, but in so many wonderful and necessary places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers, even before we can say them, even before we can think them. For whatever else you can see that we need, teach us always to trust you and follow you wherever you lead us. In Jesus' strong name, amen. I invite you to join me now as we join our voices and hearts together with people in our community and around the world as we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, our family prayer. So we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, please, bow your hearts to God to receive God's blessing in your life as together we go into God's world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord always look upon you with favor and fill your hearts with God's peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, together we say, Amen. See?